Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. So I have your comments pulled up on the side again, uh, which is going to be quite handy. Also, I wanted to start uh, with actually one that I forgot to respond to in yesterday's episode that I thought was really worth uh, bringing up. And this is from one of my longtime community members, and I really appreciate you bringing this up, Feli. But uh, I'm going to read this verbatim. Actually, uh, hang on, I don't have it fully... Um... Oh, hopefully that didn't mess up the recording. I just closed out the window for a bit. But anyway, um, something else you might want to address regarding tools in general. If the tools condition drops below 25%, there's a chance it will break during use before reaching 0%. I've had several low condition axes and hacksaws break before condition reached uh, ruined, reached the point of being ruined. So it's, it's probably best practice to keep your tools above 30%. And I am inclined to agree with that logic. Around 30% is a happy medium. And this is an area where gameplay style can actually have a great impact because I haven't mentioned what she just mentioned in this series yet because I am so anal about keeping my tools repaired up. I haven't had that happen enough to even really think about it or try and caution myself against it because I'm also I'm constantly just repairing my tools and making sure that they aren't falling to a state of disrepair. So it is worth it just to keep these things sharpened, which is why wet zones are such a valuable resource on higher difficulty levels. So that's one thing I wanted to start out the episode with. Thanks again for that. I appreciate it, buddy. So what else are we going to do today? <laughs> that's the question. Um, like, I, like I said last episode, I, I'm being very deliberate in the kind of tail end of this series. Um, we'll probably do a little bit more fishing. Let me see if there's other comments worth uh, looking at here. See, if I don't click on the other screen, what's interesting is that I can... Uh, I'm scrolling right now through comments. Actually, you can tell because it's scrolling the, uh, the game too. But... <laughs> Your extra weight appears to be due to a wolf hide. Thanks, Najiru. Appreciate that. Real nice of you. Oh, 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 okay. Here's another one that I want to read. Just because this, we've been talking about fishing, and this is another one from um, one of the more recent... I, I can't quite give the same credit for length of community membership here, but still someone that I really enjoy commenting on my uh, on my videos. Uh, one thing I've noticed when fishing is... Uh, when fishing is try not to get greedy. I tend to fish for long periods of time, as in 8 to 10 hour sessions. Obviously, you'll need water and some food for this, so a healthy supply of wood is recommended. Anyway, with the fishing, I only keep the bigger fish and I release 90% of the day's catch. I literally throw back 15 uh, whitefish and keep one bass and keep doing so. I raise my fishing skill without decimating the fish population. Catch and release is a great way to pass time, raise fishing skill, and grab a healthy meal on occasion. So, the core advice there is try not to get greedy. There's an element there of kind of playing the system. And those of you who have watched me play uh, The Lawn Dark for a long time, you know that's not the way that I tend to play. But that's not to knock anyone else's play style, let alone the play, st the play style of that uh, commenter. This is just my particular preference. So play how you want, but I think there is some wisdom in, um, you know, don't, like, have a time limit set for yourself. Um, know how long you're going to be going out and fishing and kind of try to be efficient with your resources, right? So anyway, that's that's almost four minutes of episode just kind of talking about comments, and this is a combined Let's Play and YouTube tutorial, so we're not going to do that the whole time. Let's, uh... Where are we going? <laughs> I really have no idea. Um, I do want to let this series run to 20 episodes, because I'm enjoying this day-to-day -day recording, but at the same time, over the next couple days, I think I'm actually going to have a chance to jump back to getting some backlog built up, so um, I gotta figure out what I'm doing with these last few. When the, when you have all of the basics ahead of you to teach, it's very easy to ad-lib, but once you've taught most of the basics, you, you start an episode and you're like, oh, I probably should have taken notes first or something. That would have been handy. But yeah, for the mean uh, in the meantime, we're just going to walk out into the area and see what else we can find. Now, I'm trying to think um, oh, another thing that was brought up in comments that is worth talking about is um, cave survival. Surviving in caves. And we haven't actually been in a cave yet, and I know exactly which cave I want to go to. So that is what we will do with this episode. We will go to a cave. We will survive in a cave. And it will be great. And we will feel accomplished. And we will feel like wilderness survival experts. Just kidding. No, we won't. 
By the way, uh, those of you who are regular followers of the Lawn Dark um, and are looking forward to next updates as much as we all are, um, as much as the core community is, uh, which is like everyone, um, <laughs> everyone that I know, uh, you might want to check some of the latest tweets uh, from Raphael. He was sharing some awesome, awesome stuff today um, with regard to some graphical changes they're playing with. And one of the things I am looking forward to, I'll actually point out to you now. Notice that the haze in the lawn dark, especially when it gets foggy, you've probably noticed this in the series, you've noticed it on your own. It has a blue kind of a cerulean tint. It's almost sky colored, right? The fog is blue. Um, but the game itself is very, there's a lot of white and black and the blue, even the blue in the trees has, even the snow in the trees has a lot of blue in it. And I mean, it, don't get me wrong. I, I hope they never do away with the painterly aesthetics of, of the Lawn Dark. And I don't think that they will. Um, Fwarian, one of the uh, more veteran Lawn Dark players on Twitter and um, Steam and just the Hinterland community in general was asking me about this. He's like, what do you think? Oh, hello. Is that a bunch of wolves? Yeah, it's, it's multiple wolves in one spot. Um, how to stealth around three different wolves at one time. Uh, Forian was asking me, what are your thoughts on these new changes? So I might as well just talk about it in general while we're heading to this cave. Um, it looks gorgeous. The, the, the shots that Raph shared, you have to take a look at them. If I, if I can remember, I will actually go out and try and link to them in the description of this video. All right, we're going to try and walk around this rock as a means of avoiding contact with this wolf. Yeah, there's definitely three wolves. There's two on the far side of the tracks and one right there. Let me crouch. Hello. We haven't actually gotten into a wolf struggle yet, and I'm not too worried about what would happen to me if we did, to tell you the truth. I could also shoot him in the face right now. It'd be great. It'd be a... Uh, no, I could kill him from here if I wanted to. I'm not going to. It's my last bullet. I want to save it for if we happen to encounter a bear. Something like that. Let me hop over here. Oh, wow, that's actually... That's a deceptively large drop. I'm glad I took a second look at that before I just went charging down. Oh wow, this is... pretty steep. This could hurt. Oh crap. Oh no. That's not good timing. This could be interesting. I'm gonna see what happens. <laughs> The wolf is coming right toward me. <laughs> okay, hey buddy. Hey there. Don't notice me. Don't notice me, senpai. Hey. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just hanging out on the side of a rock. I think because I'm I'm not on the ground, I I, I think that's why the game is not allowing me to be detected, but that is hilarious. Uh, oh man. <laughs> That was a decent drop. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna stealth away from that wolf, and he's gonna stealth back toward me. Great. Fun times. I mean, he's not gonna kill me. I'm in a hundred percent condition. I've got fairly protective clothing on. I'm not worried about my life. I would be much more concerned if we were playing interloper. And what you're seeing to an extent is my interloper habit in full force. Like I see a wolf and I'm like, oh god, oh god, oh god. Um, you don't need to fear wolves that much in lower difficulty levels. As a matter of fact, if you watch the first two seasons of me playing against all odds, one thing you'll notice is that I'm very gung-ho in my treatment of wolves. I just go running up to him and I mean I kind of did that earlier in this series when I was when I was killing a couple of wolves. I, I just very oh wow, that sounded wonderful. I just very deliberately provoke them. Alright, we got past the wolves. Plus there'd be another one right here. Okay, so we got past some wolves. We've got fifteen minutes or so left in the episode. We're gonna get to that cave. We'll grab a little bit of food. Just to make sure we're stocked up. Also, how am I doing on water? Fine on water. Actually oh, I'm carrying food. Forgot about that. Also carrying cattails, because uh, apparently I can't help myself. <laughs> Alright, oh, there's a deer. Just gonna shoot him with a flare for a second. 
There is a flare gun in the game. It's not in Mystery Lake. There is a flare gun. Alright, so... I'm good. I'm, I'm good to go as far as, um... Having food and, and water, I think. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Alright, let me go ahead and... We still need to cook those fish. Haven't forgotten that. Okay, actually... Yeah, I'll tell you what. Let's drop that again. And what am I carrying? <sighs> uh, I've got a f Oh, yeah, that's right. I've got a fresh hide. Let me go inside and drop that before I head to the cave. Totally forgot about the deer hide. So, one little pro tip. Repairing your clothing items in the lawn dark when they are made from animal hide. These are both at 100% right now, which is amazing. But once they need to be repaired, you can't just repair them with cloth and cured leather the same way you can the rest of your stuff. You actually have to have more hides and guts. The same materials that made them. So just know that. I have learned that lesson the hard way while playing for YouTube. I mean, like, oh, crap. My stuff's not in good shape, and I need to go kill animals or find a, a carcass in order to repair my clothing. So it, that's one of the things that will, uh, <laughs> that'll learn you, if I can say that. That'll learn you to, uh, <laughs> uh, to kill a little bit more frequently when you have the means, when you have the bullets or the arrows to do so. Um, and when you do... Uh, actually taking everything on the body. A lot of my early viewers um, used to give me a really hard time in Against All Odds Season 1 in particular uh, because I would leave corpses. I, I would I would kill animals and maybe take a little bit of meat, but I would leave the hide and the guts on a lot of corpses. And people were like, what are you doing? And for the longest time, it, it, I hadn't done too much um, repairing of like those those high level items. And so I didn't understand the urgency. But once this is the kind of thing, you know, you learn from painful experience. Once you learn, you know, and you'll be better about picking up on, uh, or picking up, you know, as much dead animal matter as you can from each kill. So we're getting pretty tired. There's three hours daylight left. Actually, curious about this. Ten sticks. We don't appear to have any cloth. Alright, so I don't actually have the means... Unless I were to break down some clothing. I don't have the means to create a snow shelter at the moment. See, that that right there is actually a crazy example of the kind of really uh, intense decision making that you might be forced to make in higher difficulty levels. Or just in really intense moments where your life is on the line. Where you say to yourself, well, I don't have the cloth that I need for a snow shelter, but if I don't make a snow shelter, I'm not going to survive this night. So the give and take of knowing that you could strip down a little bit and lose some warmth protection during the day, but if it gives you the ability to survive a blizzard inside a cave or in kind of like in a in a snow shelter like the one we made earlier in the series, that is one of the type of decisions that makes the Lawn Dark so riveting. All right, we're actually pretty tired, so I don't know if I want to go to the cave that I was planning to. I kind of want to show off climbing, but I, I think we might be too tired for me to make this climb. <laughs> Should I risk it? I'm also encumbered. Not very encumbered, but I'm encumbered. I could drop the rifle down at the bottom and not be encumbered and probably make the climb. It's not the tallest climb in the world. I haven't climbed anything yet, so it's worth doing just to demonstrate how this works. Climbing is a newer addition to the Lawn Dark. It's really cool. You want to make sure you are rested when you do it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to try it. If I get like halfway up the rope and I'm not confident that I can make it all the way to the top, I will descend quickly. Descending doesn't take as much energy as climbing, so I'll know pretty quickly if I'm going to make it. All right, let's drop the rifle. It's very evident that's on the ground. We'll, we'll go ahead and put it in a place where it's quite visible. There we go. So that way we can't miss it when we get off the rope. Okay. Oh, God. 
this is a slow climb. Okay, I feel like I'm about halfway up and I have more than half of my climbing meter, but this meter is deceptive. It'll start to run out faster on you. You see what's happening? I'm actually getting a little bit more tired because I'm attempting this climb when I'm not that rested. Yeah, I'm going to get back down. We're going to get down. See, I'm exhausted now. You don't want to climb. Yes, I did that on purpose. I knew that my chances were small. I hope I vocalized that. I wanted to show what it's like, how hard it is to climb when you're not prepared to do so. But don't worry, there's another cave nearby. So yes, there is a cave up on top of that area. So now we're exhausted, for obvious reasons. Let's keep the hunting rifle out. Take a breath, buddy, you'll be fine. Okay, I think we're actually coming up on the cave. I think the cave is right on the other side of this rock, if I am not mistaken. Yep, there it is. I can see the icicles. Might have to drop some gear. <laughs> Shut up, Mark. <laughs> is that? No, that's a rock. I thought I saw a bear back there for a second. Okay, so notice, first of all, let me let me step outside here so you can see. It feels like 41 degrees right now, so actually we weren't deep enough inside the cave. But when you get back to the back of the cave, see that? Temperature jump. This is just the sunset effect, that's why it looks so red in here. The atmosphere just takes on a red tint and in caves it... I'm sure they'll change this eventually or it won't be this way. Um, but anyway, there's a couple different things you could do if you want to make sure you survive. Uh, but at this point, I'm actually pretty confident with that nice of a survival chance. Um, how, do I have any wood on me? Anything at all? I mean, I've got 12 sticks. I don't have really anything else that can burn. So I think what I want to try to do before I actually camp out for the night, let's take a look around really quick. We are exhausted, so we're not, we don't have infinite energy or daylight to do this. But it would be nice to have a fire going. For some of the night, at least. Just for... Call it warmth insurance, right? So let's let's have a look around and see if we can find any limbs. We're gonna do another night walker here. We're gonna... We're gonna spend a night in this cave. Which can be really daunting the first time you do it, but... Once you've done it a few times... You can let your instinct take over and just do what you need to. All right, so got a couple of limbs here. 45 minute breakdown. We are exhausted, so we are going to lose condition due to this, and this this wood is not going to be light, so this that's not going to help either. All right, still above freezing, thanks to our boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. <laughs> and uh, let's 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 look around a moment longer because that's that's not enough to have a super long fire. I think we can do, if we get one more limb broken up, we can spot one more. At least it's a nice night, right? These are the best nights in the lawn dark. Not a cloud in the sky. It's a little bit windy. I wish it wasn't that windy. By the way, fun fact, I'm walking the opposite direction right now, but those of you who remember the opening of Against All Odds Season 2, this is where I was. I was walking towards these woods with the lake on my right, and it was very dark. Um, you could see my character's breath, and that's what I use to create the teaser and the, uh, and the opening title sequence for Against All Odds Season 2. Fun fact. So, hang on, let's... I don't see any other limbs at all. This is kind of pointless. There's the cave mouth. Oh, is that a dead body? Is that a dead body that I somehow missed? Or is the, are those just rocks that look like arms? Yeah, they're... <laughs> okay. Alright, so now we've got enough to start a fire. But we do have sticks on us. So, I mean, the sticks count for something. So here's what we're going to do. By the way, just a reminder, I'm hitting 4 on the keyboard to do this. Let's look at key bindings for the computer real quick so you can see this. 4 starts a fire. 3 drops a decoy. Ooh, decoys! That's something I'll cover in the next episode. People have actually brought that up, and I somehow managed to skim over that comment earlier, but I've been meaning to get to that. Decoying wolves. It's not something I've done as much, so it'll be 
fun for me to revisit as well. So I'm going to put this fire right here. Okay, we're going to use cardboard matches, cedar firewood. This is going to be our best chance, I think. I don't think there's anything we can do to improve our chances. 70% is not bad, though. I'll take it. And we have six pieces of cedar firewood, so it's it's actually going to be a pretty long fire, all things considered. It might actually last the whole night. I was just trying to be a completionist. <laughs> I was trying to be... I was having a min-max moment. Let me, let me get all the resources I possibly can. Well, that's not really min-maxing. That's just being thorough. Which they're kind of the same thing, but... Min-maxing is a, is a gameplay style. For those of you who don't know the term, it's all about... Um, you know, doing the minimum possible input for the maximum possible gain. Okay. Okay, well that's all of our fuel. I actually piled all of my sticks on there. Ten hours darkness left, so this fire is going to go for most of the night. But the good news is, now that we've got that there, um, tell you what, let me go ahead and get some water from that really quick. And then we'll sleep. And we'll sleep by the fire. I think we'll be okay back here. Because we have a warmth bonus, and I'll show you how to look at this. We have a warmth bonus from the... Um, oh, chill out. We've got a warmth bonus from our bedroll as well, which helps. So there's that. Let's go ahead and eat the rest of our fresh venison. And then... Drink some water. Okay, um... Yeah, you know what? This is always a little bit risky when you do this. Notice I'm getting a 7 degree bonus. This fire is only, only going to last for how much longer? 7 hours? Tell you what, let's sleep for 7 hours, okay? It's not as long as I need to. The longer you sleep, the faster your exhaustion will recover, but we'll definitely recover our condition, and at least we know the fire is still going. Fire also is going to protect us from anything. Okay, feels like 125 degrees because the, the fire is putting out 86 degrees of that. Alright, let's sleep for... Hang on, we're thirsty. We do need to resolve that problem, so let's drink. Did I pick the rifle back up or did I leave it on the ground? I picked it back up. Okay. Alright, so let's, uh, let's sleep for one more hour. Fire's gone out. Let's see how cold we are. I, don't, I think we're going to be okay, because we have the bedroll bonus, we have our clothing. Yeah, we're fine. Because of our clothing and our bedroll bonus, and we're in the back of a cave, we're good. So let's go ahead and just sleep for three more hours. And then we'll do some climbing. <laughs> oh, now the, now the question marks are going to pop up, so now the blizzard might have just started, which is hilarious. Oh, no, it's just... Oh, no, it's a blizzard. Feels like 36 degrees back here. So check this out. Oh, it feels like 35 degrees. 34. Ooh. It's actually getting colder. Hang on. Let's... This is a good test. This is a good test. Let's hang out for a bit and see how cold it gets back here. We're close to shelter, so we can go somewhere where we're safer than this. The bedroll is, again, a 8-degree bonus. 7.6-degree bonus. Feels like 27 degrees. 26 degrees. Wow. Are we getting a wetness? Okay, we're not. We're not getting wetter back here. So I was curious if any moisture was making it back here. What if I stood over in this direction? Alright, now at this point, we are actually cold. If this had happened during the night, we would be in danger. But let's go ahead and pick up our bedroll. Always an important thing to remember to do. Pick up your damn bedroll. And then let's, um... Tell you what, let me drink some water real quick. That should relieve us of a little bit of burden. Please be on. No, not quite enough. Uh, tell you what, let me eat a few cattails to solve the problem. Which technically shouldn't solve the problem at all, right? Because they're just going from my backpack into my stomach, but... <laughs> so be it. Alright, so we're gonna head out into the blizzard. Usually very unwise, but because we have this awesome clothing, we can afford to step out into... These terrible winds. I'm trying to raise my voice so you can still hear me. 
step out into these terrible winds and and not die. We are, of course, our clothes are getting very wet right now. But I know this shelter is nearby. So let's take a look at the damage. Alright, clothes aren't even that wet. Condition-wise, how we doing? Because blizzards can also affect the condition of clothing. Actually pretty good, all things considered. Alright, well on that note, I will go ahead and cut this episode here. In the next one, we're going to talk about decoys. And that will actually be a little bit of fun for me because it's something I don't even do as much in the Lawn Dark. But for those of you wanting to learn all of the essential game controls, it's something that I do need to cover because, as you saw, it's one of the key bindings. So I think it would be good to cover it, not only for my own sake, but for yours. It'll be fun. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New survival, science fiction, and or simulation content airs every single day at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on my channel. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.